Bonjour everyone, Leslie Ray with Mailbox Muse and our fall kit is called Tout Chose Francais, all things French. And this is going to be so much fun. Um, it comes with a set of wonderful stamps. Uh, you can see some of them here. There's of course an Eiffel Tower and a um, nice little lamp post and a little dining table with some wine. Uh, the word Paris, uh, a little phrase, um, La Tour de Fell, which is French for Eiffel Tower. Uh, there's a phrase that says an evening in Paris, and then there's a phrase that says um, evening in. So you can put your evening in with Paris and make a big one. Now, also with this comes some yummy beautiful laces, uh, several different styles of lace, love the lace, and also comes some pearls, isn't that beautiful, and um, some fun charms, there's a wine glass, a little key, a little crown, a little French horn, a little parasol, because when you're in France you say parasol. Um, I believe Jean said that it's going to come with some doilies, and I have these fun gold doilies or you could use German scrap out of the alteredpages.com store um, but even if they were just white doilies that would be fun so doilies and then there's tons of collages as always and some beautiful beautiful paper um, I've taken one of the papers and just kind of whacked it up this is part of the French collage page uh, paper that you will get a sheet of and I've I've cut up some stuff on it that I really, really like. Um, I think you might be getting some French phrases. Um, and then you will get some collage pages. And here's my collage page. I also have cut it up. Um, I'll show you the pieces we're going to be using. But it's like old labels and stuff. French labels. So what I have taken off of one of the pages is some fun stamps. These will be used. We're going to be making some ATC cards. And really what the focus of this video is going to be is how I get the bases made. And then we'll put some cards together real quick. And then some pieces here. So let's get started. This is probably one of my favorite background making techniques. Put those things off to the side. Move my laces. Um, it's, it's simple. It's very, very, very uh, fun to do, and I, I highly recommend you give it a try if you have not. I am stamping on just plain white cardstock. I'm going to use my Versamark stamp ink, or whatever your favorite emboss ink is, and clear embossing powder. And I like to use um, just a, a regular grain, not necessarily ultra fine. And not necessarily UD, actually, I think UD would be too thick. I'm just using a, a good clear embossing powder. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stamp, emboss, mist, and then we're going to burn the emboss powder back out. And it's really not burn burning because we're not going to like set the paper on fire, but um, we're going to melt it back down so that high enamel is not on there. And then we can do whatever we want to. You'll have a nice, clean, flat surface. And if you really like what you do, I recommend that you take the moment, uh, once you get your, your background paper finished, and take a moment and scan it. Um, I have a couple that I really like how they turned out. And so I scanned them. And so right now, I am stamping some Eiffel Towers on my paper and after I get my Eiffel Towers stamped and my other images stamped I am going to use that clear emboss powder I like working with Versamark for my embossing ink because it seems to last longer than others and what's holding my stamps on right now is just some double stick tape. Really, really simple stuff here. And here I'm going to do a twofer. I'm going to stick my Evening in Paris stamp on here. And I'm going to stick my 
table with wine image. Look, I have glitter everywhere. Okay. Can't live with that glitter apparently. Oops. I was afraid that might happen. So let me show you. When this gets warm, you can either tape right on top of it, which is what I'm going to do, or you can take and um, take that tape off and stick another one on. The other thing you can do is mount all of your stamps and um, there are so many little red rubber sets in the mailbox muse and in ultra pages that after a while I get a little um, overwhelmed with how many I have to mount and so I find it just simple to grab what I want and stick a piece of, of um, double stick tape down on my on my stamping block. So you can do this, but if you prefer to have some more um, cushion for your stamp, by all means, add um, add it to a cushioned back thing. Okay, let's see. Let me stamp up here. It's okay if your stuff falls off. This is just serving as a background. And I'm just kind of looking on my paper before I stamp so that I make sure I'm stamping in the empty spots. I think I am. And after this stamp, I think I want to do um, one more stamp called Paris. And I kind of did a crazy thing when I cut mine out, and you'll see here in just a minute. I cut out my P by itself. Now, this is why these kinds of stamps are so forgiving. Because I can line it back up and I'm good to go, even though they are not connected in any way, shape, or form. Very silly of me. But don't let that distract or deter you from using your stamps. I've got this. Let's see if you can see much of it in here. Can you see? You can kind of see right there that little bit of shimmer. That's the wonderful, wonderful watermark pad. And this is a brand new juicy one. You don't have to use a brand new juicy one. I just chose to uh, because if you saw my other one, you would feel sad for me. I, uh, what happens is, inevitably, while I'm crafting, and hopefully I won't do it today because the other ink I'm crafting with, with y'all, is a pigment ink and not, not, not a dye ink. But inevitably, I stick my stamped, or my ink stamp, into my Versamark in the middle of crafting um, because I'm just so into what I'm doing and I'm not thinking. And I will get a stamp image on my pad or residue from another project. Okay, now you can see I've come in with the powder. Okay, it's all nice in there. There are some spots in here that have just some smudge of powder. Now you can take a little brush, you can take your finger. I am going to take um, a little brush here, a little soft brush. I'm going to use my, my water brush. It's not got any water on it right now. It's just dry. And I'm going to get some of that excess residue. The reason I want to get that off is because when I heat set this, that will provide a resist for my ink. Now, I see one more place. I want to stamp right here the word Paris. And then I think I'm done for now for that. The other thing is, is if you see something and you don't like it, 
and you don't like its placement, then at this point it's very easy to get it off of your paper. Just like I did getting the extra pieces off that had straight, I can take my little brush and brush it off and you, you won't see that. So, it's okay that an evening in Paris and Paris are going different ways. It's not going to matter. I promise you, it's not going to matter. Now, if you're a fan of heart crafter, what I call them, and you are not sure that you are going to be able to handle just putting a bunch of stuff on here, just stick with me. Trust me, it's going to be okay. At this point, you want to just hit this with the heat gun enough to melt it once. And you know it's melted when you see it glisten. And this is just clear embossed powder. If I stay in one spot too long, I will over bake my, my embossing and I will melt it on through. And while that is the technique, we don't want to do that immediately. We want to um, give this some time to make a, a pretty base. So you see the shine coming up on these stamped images? That's how you know they're done. And if you had a, a, a stamp embossing powder, embossing powder has different um, grains. You can get some that are chunkier and bigger, like the UT, Ultra Thick Emboss Enamel. And it will be just a smidge too big to get all this nice detail. Um, but you can also get an ultra fine, which will pick up every little itty bitty 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 detail. So this is kind of somewhere in between. You, I would use your favorite one that gets you enough detail that you would like. Okay, now I have everything nice and coated here. Okay, now I'm going to grab my plain water mister and move some of this stuff so I don't get too carried away because I've been known to just go crazy misting. And I want to mist my paper, get it wet, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp on some very concentrated inks. The Delusions inks are very, very concentrated, and you don't want to um, use them too dark. Now, see, that's very, very dark. And well, I really like that. I want to lighten that up a little bit. And then another way to lighten these up is to add white on it. When white has a shaker ball in it, you got to be sure you shake it up. And then go over your color get kind of a pale color going there. And this is where I lose some of my friends. They get a little apprehensive because they can't handle the, the stress of everything getting all colored and and stuff, but it's okay. Just stay with me. I love the way these splatter. It's so much fun. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, to take your rag cloth, and I'm going to do that. I have a crafty cloth that I always have, and kind of blot some of these. And 
you can see in some places where it's extra wet, I can pick it up and move it. Now, at this point, you ask yourself, do I like what I've got going on here? Do I want it lighter? Do I want it wetter? I think I want it just a smidge lighter. So, almost pastel-like. And I love this white ink just for that very reason. Because you saw how dark those came on at the beginning. And now, this is kind of soften this all up. Um, if we were working on a paper that had, um, that was not as absorbent as this, this paper that we're working on is very absorbent. I picked it on purpose because it's absorbent. It's just plain cardstock that I can get at, um, at Staples. It's nothing special. Um, if this was something that had a little more of a, um, what I'm looking for, a resist to it, then we could play some more with the mixing. But I really like, I really like all these colors in here. And as you see, our embossing powder still has that nice sheen. Well, we're going to do two things at once here. We're going to dry this and we're going to melt the embossing powder. Normally, you don't want to heat something until it melts like that, but in melting the embossing powder, this becomes just a single surface. You don't have a surface of not shiny and shiny next together. It's all just going to be not shiny, and that will enable us to easily stamp back over the top of this some more layers, and we can keep layering if we wanted to. So, here we go. Heating and melting. And as I heat it, you can see it start to melt away. This will take just a minute, and also as I heat it, you can see that some of the colors lighten up a little bit, and they're not as as dark as they were before. Now what I will do sometimes is I will get this all done and finished, and I will realize that I really, really like the background that I've made, and I want to, um, I want to keep it I'll use it multiple times. While you're doing this, try not to stay in one spot too long. Because if you do stay in one spot too long, you can kind of scorch your paper. You don't want to scorch it. You just want to melt that embossed enamel back through there. And right now, while it's super wet like it is, um... I, I want to be careful around things. I don't want to get too carried away. I'm going to dry on the bottom a little bit to kind of help speed this along. This is the part of the video that if you wanted to stop and get a drink, uh, you could <laughs> Leave me drying for a minute while you go get a drink or take a little break. Um, it shouldn't take too long, but I am going to dry it for you so you can kind of see the process because that's important to this technique is, is burning out that, that embossed powder.
see if you can see this up close. You can see it go from shiny and it melts again and then it kind of goes away. Mainly I'm going to do this in just a couple of spots. It just takes a few minutes, so bear with me while we get this heated out. I've done this a lot on Halloween stuff, so that this aging that you kind of get from the um, the burning out of the embossed powder. You know, some people may have really liked the the, the white white. Um, I think it looks cool with the aging. But that comes with getting the, the embossed putter out of there, but um, when you're doing it with halloween -y stuff, it really, really makes a neat effect. Now once you get this all taken care of the way you like it, what we're going to do is if you uh, aren't going to stop and, and um, make a, a copy of this, definitely what you're going to do is cut it up into ATCs. Now you can cut it up around things you really, really like. Yeah, you, know, you really like certain images. Or you can cut it up just um, straight across. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up so that I have um, so a, an ATC is two and a half by three and a half. I'm going to come over here to the five. I'm going to get up there because I want to get these in the middle that I've already started. And um, here and this will make a neat background strip for something so don't go too far with that and cut here and then we're going to do three and a half and three and a half which is seven and we can either I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim I'm gonna trim here, just a smidge, 
and do three and a half, and three and a half, so seven, and three and a half. There we go. So here's two of our cards. Alrighty. And then here's the other two. Oh, and we may have to go in and do a little um, creative trimming here. So, there we go. And then I really like this, this one the way it looks. And I'll go a little further in. And three and a half. There we go. So, and from that, you can see you get at least eight cards that you can make. We're just going to go with the four. We'll finish this out later. So, put that aside. And then now you have an Eiffel Tower, a dinner, another dinner, and another Eiffel Tower. Now, here's the cool thing. Okay. This one needed a little more. You can see it needed a little more burning out. It's a little shiny still. We'll do that in a minute. But what we'll do is we'll work with these that are not so shiny so much. I mean, there's a little bit of shine left in some spots, but not in the main crux of it. So what I want to do is now we're going to come back and stamp again. I told you we were going to double stamp. And put my Paris right there. I'll grab my Eiffel Tower. And this time I am going to stamp it with my black ink. And I'm using a black ink that is a... Um, a pigment ink and it means it has a longer uh, dry time it doesn't just automatically just zap its dryness right away it you have to give it a little bit now um, I'm gonna let this offset right here so I have my Eiffel Tower like that love that that's beautiful so I do something similar again on this one with another, I know I said I was going to, I need to heat that out, don't I? We have to put that off to the side. We'll do one Eiffel Tower and we'll do one with the, with the lamp in the dining. So, here's my lamp. I'm going to stamp it first on this page. And I'm going to stamp it right Okay, so I've got my nice little lamp there, and get my table out again, and stamp the table again. Now, you could just do completely a stamping job like I'm doing right now, and be done with it. You don't have to... Okay, this is what I need to do. I need to show this to you because this is why. This is why we need to finish burning it out. You see how that happened? This is not finished being burned out, and so it didn't give us a good image. So let's stop what we're doing here. Let's burn out another one really, really quick. I'll move that off to the side. Temporarily put my lid on my ink because I don't want to dry my ink out. Finish pouring this one out so I can do my table with my lamp post and get a good image on there. I am really loving this Eiffel Tower stamp. It is so, so pretty. So very graphic. Now, keep in mind, when you're, I like to make my background papers and stuff, rather than always buying them or having them pre-made. And so when I see the, the pattern papers, a lot of times I see making embellishments with them or um, using them as very, in very small ways and using the stamps or the collage pages as your focal point. So this one's going to be our second Eiffel Tower stamp. I've got one Eiffel Tower here that we can 
go in and do our, our dinner table on. So let's do this again. Here we go. It's nice and flat. Yay. Okay. I'm going to stamp. I'm going to stamp off to the side a little bit because I want, I want it to go off to the side. So, yes, that stamped much better. And we'll stamp our light post again. And we'll stamp him right here. Much better. And then what's left is Paris. And I'm going to do one that just says Paris. And then the other one, I'm going to do the, the night out stamp. Or the, ooh, no. I'm going to do, for, the, for this one, I'm going to use the, um, the stamp that says Lecture Eiffel, which means the Eiffel Tower. So instead of the big Paris here, I'm going to use the little a night out on this. An evening in Paris. There we go. I'm going to use that across the bottom. Paris. There we go. It says an evening in Paris across the bottom there. And then Latour Eiffel. So I'm going to put that right down here at the bottom. Latour Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower. So that's very simple, very quick. Now, from here, you can take and bring them onto a piece of cardboard, which is what I'm going to do. So even though I, I'm going to have to trim these down just a smidge, but I'll show you how we're going to do that. Um, I'm going to take a piece of my collage page here. It has some different things. I have my little stamps. Let's go with let's put this on here. I'll just use some plain old glue or some fast finish decoupage type stuff because I'm just blowing paper to paper and I'm not uh, layering things yet. I'm going to do this with my ink. I'm going to Add this to my piece of paper. And this is just perform it's just becoming a base for my my ATC. And really you're not going to see very much of it on the outside because I am going to only trim this just a smidge. Just a little wee bit. Okay, so there's this one. And then I had myself another one pre-cut, but I do not see it handy. So I'm going to grab myself another piece of cardboard here. And let's see. That is three and a half. And go to two and a half. Here we go. And again, I'm going to do this, and on this one, I'm going to use a little piece here, and then this little piece right here that I cut off with.
Okay, showing us down here the side. And add just a wee little bit right here. There we go. Now this is a fun way to do it because you're just kind of collaging on your page as you go. And okay, there we go. Stick our little piece of words in here. Yeah. And trim, trim, trim. I like this white glue because it it really glues fast. Um, and here we go. So we have this collage image kind of thing going on, and then we have this piece that is just trimmed background. And we're going to trim this down a smidge. So that our pages fit on here better. I'm going to take some off the top of the tower. And I'll take some off the side of this tower. Okay. And then this one, I'm going to take a little off the side of the table, a little bit off the bottom, and probably a little bit off the top too, because just a very little bit is coming off the bottom. Now, I set these aside and let them dry for a while, and so they are not too bad. Had I not, I would definitely need to heat set them, okay? Um, you don't want to, to to play with the papers when they're not quite ready to go. Okay, now see you can barely see anything on the background. That's why it really didn't matter how much you've got back there. And this I want to glue straight down. And I want to put a little bit of lace hanging out the edge so that you see it ever so gently. I will trim it in just a minute. I want to get it down. And um, gluing it this way is a great way to sandwich it so that you have it in there. There we go. Not giving me as much of a little peek at that as I want. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that while I have it here. I think you get like about a yard of this or so, a couple of feet at least. And uh, this is such a pretty lace. I'll put it on this piece right here. Before I hang that down, hang on just a second. I want to touch the sides of it with a little bit of ink because I don't want to ink that once I get it on the lace on there. So hang on just a second. Okay, there we go. Get these sides real quick. And this I definitely want a heater. I would make a big old mess on my project. Um, fussing with the lace getting it put on there like I want it. Okay. So, here we go. And definitely now you can see just the slightest edge of my ATC. Putting that little bit of lace makes it go over the edge just a little bit. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you can make some little ribbon flowers right there. Add a piece of, um, I think I want to add a piece of this. This is what I want to add a piece of. I love doilies and things because they are so festive and makes 
just the neat little embellishment just hitting it. And this is also how you could do the um, the gold scrap if you wanted to. Just kind of find a pattern on there that you really like and hit it on the corner. And then I'm going to cut here across the corner and down like that and kind of roll this over the edge to finish that off right there. Okay. And then I want to finish off this back so that I don't see it because this will just be a nice thing to have on the back and you can write all of your details of your ATC. You can use a piece of, and that's what I'm fixing to use, is a piece of the um, leftover card or another card if you wanted to across the back. Making sure I get all my little pieces of doily in. Now if you had a white doily instead of a gold doily, you can definitely get some mists and mist it. That's the neat thing about doing things with white and having a selection of mists and, and stuff on hand is you can really take a, a plain white piece of paper and a piece of cardboard and create something really kind of fun. So let's do the other one. Get him on here. And see if you've gotten this melted out right, you'll see that image on the back. Just so you know. And then let's stick this one here. And on this one, since it's our evening out, I want to stick some more foil doily on there again. I'm going to do kind of right down beside it, same, same kind of little thing, only a different motif there. And then I kind of, actually I'm going to kind of go over it like this, get some of that glue back off, or go further over because I'm in a mess, let's go right here. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to go and stick my motif right here. And give it a little cut, a little crop, a little cut, and roll it over the edge again. But this would be cute with the bicycle paper on the back. I think that would be darling. One of the papers is a bicycle paper. Um, the back of this one, I'm going to use a piece of this. Trim that real quick to two and a half by three and a half. And see, I, when I come at this, I'm going to leave where the gold is alone. I'm not going to add black there. So I'm just going to add it right there on the edge and keep that real quick. down on the back okay. and 
Um, there we go. Turn some of these out of the way. Show you some other stuff we have that we can use here. If you wanted to, you could go all the way around. This piece of beads is good enough to go all the way around. Or you can um, add yourself another little strip right here with some lace and put the beads down. I think I'm going to keep these off. I have found, um, I guess, probably at... I think I probably found these at my um, just plain old big box store. Uh, they're Blumenthal Lansing buttons. So if you're a button fanatic like I am, find some Blumenthal Lansing. And look, we have a little little Florida Lee that we can stick somewhere. I think I want that one there. Not sure I want both of them. But this kit also came with some really cute little charms. So let me grab my charms. And then some other things you might consider are some pearl bling and some browns would be very pretty. I think this little umbrella on the night out one would be also very, very cute. Have it on the corner there or something like that. Um, what I think I want to do is take a little crown one and put it down here with that and grab my little baby lace and make a, a point on it and stick that through the crown. I think it's more fun to use what you have on hand. So find you some some lancing buttons, Blumenthal lancing buttons, and create your own yummy background paper with the stamps. Now I want you to come back because I will be making a second bonus video. This will not be in your in your highlight. You'll have to come back. You'll have to look at the first video and I will edit it to have a link to the second video in it so that you can find it. But the second video We'll show you a couple more ideas with these cards. And I will have a cute tutorial on how to make a little card holder with these. Now, the best glue to take this and hold it down um, is either get you a little bit of E6000 to add metal pieces to your, um, to your project. And this is an itty bitty bitty tube of E6000. These are so cute. I think they came four to a pack at the store. And they're perfect because about halfway through my E6000 tube, I always, always end up having to cut at it or something. Now, isn't that cute? With my little crown on there, my little Tour Eiffel, my little bit of lace. Love this. And. I'm going to put my little button down that I got right here. I'll let it dangle off the side like that. And honestly, I've been thinking about it. I think I want some pearls, people. So I'm just going to put a little bead of glue right down the edge here. I'm going to add my pearls into that glue. And watch, this will just yank this and hold it. It's amazing. I'm going to trim right there. Ta-da! I love these. I think these are fun. So, some fun little techniques. And I'll show you in my next video a few more 
of the ATCs that I made with the background and I will show you how to create a folder holder for your ATCs. Okay, great upcycle project. So, thank you for stopping by and I hope you enjoy your All Things Paris kit. I am enjoying it very much and don't forget to check back and look in the description down at the bottom for your link to the second bonus track. Bonus track, bonus track, bonus track. Thank you again. Enjoy your muse. Good night.